Okay, we left off in John chapter 3, verse 16, in the message of the one sin that will keep us out of heaven. Now, in verse 18 of John chapter 3, it says, Unbelief equals condemned already. So you see, there's only two states. Remember, always. Goats, sheep. Believer, non-believer. Heaven, not heaven. Okay? So, if you don't believe, you're already condemned. So, unbelief is what prevents us from eternal life with God. We're going to move quickly to John chapter 8, verse 24. If you do not believe in me, you will die in your sin. Jesus said that it does not need any interpretation. It is quite simple. You must believe in Jesus. And have you forgotten John chapter 14, verse 6? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way. Now, we're going to jump to Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. All sin will be forgiven, except for the sin against the Holy Spirit, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? What does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit is our counselor, helper, um, guide, uh, teacher. Now, it's very important that you look at it this way. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. Now, individually, it he tells us, when, listen, what you're about to do is sinful. So he addresses that in our conscience, our heart. Now, if you harden your heart against the nudging of the Holy Spirit, you are blaspheming the Spirit because you're not believing in what the Holy Spirit is telling you and guiding you uh, to do. So if you push the Holy Spirit away, you are in unbelief because you cannot receive the Holy Spirit without first believing in Jesus. That's how the Holy Spirit is sent to us. So you see, it's the same thing. We must put our faith and belief in Jesus. Jesus is the Savior, the only way back to right standing with God, which is through holiness. Without holiness, no one shall see God. I'm answering this question on a comment. So I'm going to tell that person to watch this uh, video. So I, they asked me, what does it mean to be holy? It's that simple. Was Jesus holy? The answer is yes. We are to be holy. Without it, we will not see God. We cannot attain this on our own. I've already made videos on that. But if you're clothed in the righteousness of Christ, when God looks upon you, he sees Jesus. It's that simple. That's why Jesus says, you are the light of the world. But remember, before we became the light, Jesus is the light that entered into the world. And he left us believers to continue shining in the world. Not our own light, of course. It is him shining through us. Okay, so we are going to go now to First John. Another one of my viewers gave me some good advice that um, I may not have understood or was clear in my message in part uh, two. But... Um, he may have misunderstood what I'm saying here. And he gave me some verses. So 1 John chapter 3, we're going to go to verse 3. Okay? Uh, because there's still people out there with um, a good intention to make sure that I'm on the right path. But I don't preach opinion. I preach the biblical truth. Now, I purposely may leave something out to see for those who have no knowledge of Scripture. And then they quickly jump and judge while they still have the log in their eye. And then when I post the other, oh, I didn't know that. And then I may remove a comment or choose not to listen. Either way, it does not affect me or you if you have chosen to put your faith and belief in Jesus. Okay, 
So it says here, and everyone who has the hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. The emphasis on him and he is referring to Jesus. If you put your belief in Jesus, guess what? You purify yourself by your faith in Jesus. But it's the Holy Spirit that comes and purifies. And it says, just as he is pure. To make sure you understand what John is trying to tell you here. It's only about Jesus. But you become righteous because of him. Now, we're going to jump to verse 6. This is still 1 John chapter 3, now verse 6. This says, whoever abides in him, referring to Jesus, does not sin. That's why I say in other sermons, you can live a day without sinning or else Jesus lied when he said to the woman, go and sin no more, empowering her to not sin. While those who were getting ready to bust her up with some stones left still covered in their sins. A lot of people miss that message. Anyway, it says, whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Now, the word know in scripture, Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bore a son. So the known here is a sexual intimate uh, connotation between a husband and wife. So when Jesus said to me, said, not everyone who comes to me and say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. He's referring to Christians. But he said, I never knew you. I was never in your heart. It is an intimate relation. Hey, how you doing? That's the relationship you have. It's a distant relationship only with words. But he's seeking an intimate relationship. That's what it means. I never knew you. Referring again to the sheep and the goat. There's only two. And another word for those groups are holy, unholy, righteous, and unrighteous. Revelation chapter 22. Okay, now, here is my finale. Little children, referring to everybody, it's not in literal uh, babies, okay, but little children, when the scripture uses this, it's referring to those who are uh, young in their faith, like new Christians, okay? And remember the term, Jesus himself said, unless a man be born again, man meaning mankind, so male and female, as long as you're born again, you can enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, to be born, you're born as an infant needing guidance. That is why we need the assembling of the church. This is a church. And if you're listening to me and you're listening with someone else or us sharing our spiritual connection together, we are a church. And Jesus is in the midst. That's his own words. He has to stand by it. So, little children, those who are young in the faith, let no one deceive you. That's where, if you read it in context now, you understand, oh, because they're young in the faith, they're easily manipulated or, or led in the wrong path uh, guidance, okay, uh, or, or misinterpret the scriptures. So he's saying, don't let anyone deceive you. Deceive you how? He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous who is this righteous one they speak of there's only one jesus but john who rests his head on the bosom of jesus is telling you that don't let anyone tell you differently from what i'm telling you no one on earth can change this if you practice righteousness through the guidance of the holy spirit then, my friend, you are righteous just as Jesus is righteous. Didn't Jesus say in Matthew, be perfect as your heavenly Father in heaven is perfect? But the word perfect in the language it was used can also mean fully mature, Christian, fully understanding what the scripture means. So you see, that answers it. Jesus is the only one that makes us holy and righteous 
by our love for him. And if we love him, we keep his commandments. You see, there's only two laws. Love God first, love everyone else. And if you do those two things, you fulfill the commandments. And if you do that, it's because you've already put your faith in Jesus, the only one thing you need to do. One sin you must turn away from is unbelief. People turned away from my message because they thought, oh, what is this guy talking about? But you were quick to judge. What I have said to you is scripture. Comment, subscribe, and listen to this. Um, I did some work on the website. I'm still learning how to do this. Click on the walkingministries.online, drop me a message, email, and then I can, uh, whatever criticism or, or uh, whatever it is that I may say something wrong without knowing, because remember I said, the world cannot judge a Christian, but a Christian must judge other Christians to make sure that they are not stepping out of the light, just as Paul reprimanded Peter when he stepped out of line. Because you're spiritual, you can judge those who are spiritual. But the spiritual judge both the spiritual and the worldly. But the worldly cannot judge the spiritual. For some of you know that's uh, in Corinthians. First Corinthians. But anyway, my friends, I, I, um, I'm excited to see who will you know message, uh, email, so that I can answer some questions or preach on topics uh, that, that interests you. So, yes, that is how we become holy. Because once he returns, sheep, goat, holy, unholy, righteous, unrighteous. I'm Pastor Rich, Walking Ministries Online, and I will see you soon.